Hi, Joe 508, how are you? All right, so it is Tuesday, the 26th of June. And um, I really, really enjoyed reading all your discussions. Um, I understand your concern. We all know you're not biologists. Please don't worry. You, you will know what you know in this course, okay? And that's okay. Um, we're starting from this core of biology, and then we're going to move outward. And then the second half of the course is all about um, what is known in terms of scientific analysis of interventions, um, things like music and yoga and things like this. And, it, and they all reflect back onto the very things that we've been talking about in class. Um, you know, anxiety and stress, um, how the brain connects, connects to the body, the, the mind-body connection, okay? Um, so, we, you know, activate this structure called the amygdala. It's our fear center. It's our anger center, okay? Think of the A in each word, okay? Fear and anger, okay? And rage. All these are uh, amygdala functions, okay? Yeah, incoming information from the outside world um, goes into the amygdala, and the amygdala makes this kind of decision, okay? And so we're going to learn about that. We're going to learn about decision making and another part of the cortex called the frontal cortex and, as well and how they interact. Okay. And uh, so you guys did great on uh, the first uh, uh, stress um, section where we watched the Sapolsky videos and we looked at the inverted U. You guys did great converting this again to this phenomenon of epigenetics that very, very few people know about. You know, we all think about, okay, we get our our core of, of chromosomes from our mom and our core of chromosomes from our dad, and they blend together into our genome, our genetics, and that's it. It's all good, okay? You've heard of mutations with respect to really horrible things like cancer, but um, not this concept of every single thing that we do in our life in terms of our exposure to the environment is flipping all these switches on and off, on and off in terms of all the different recipes that we out here have out there to make proteins, okay? All the different genes that are in your DNA, all right? So you guys got it wired. We were really, really happy with how things turned out, okay? All right, so we go into the next section. And, you know, again, under this concept of we're building, and, and again, I wrote this right here so that I, I was hoping you guys would understand where we're at with this, okay? All right, um, we want you to be able to read um, true scientific literature, okay, um, so that you can interpret this kind of stuff when it comes up all throughout your lives, okay? All right, so we looked at the, the, the um, sociology, psychology of stress. We got some of the biology on that in terms of brain physiology. We looked at stuff like epigenetics, okay? And now we're going we're gonna to jump into some of the real pathologies. So this week we're going to look at clinical depression, okay? and how the stress response and, and clinical depression interact, okay? Stress can cause depression. Depression can cause stress. It's this downward spiral, okay? And we have these things, these approaches to life that can minimize this, okay? Uh, one of them is called cognitive behavioral therapy, okay? And I use it as much as I can. I'm not great at it as much as I can on a daily basis so that I'm able to deal with all the things that get thrown at me. Um, another thing that, that came out of our discussions from the last week is that, um, you know, um, we all look great on the outside, okay? Uh, but on the inside, we have, all of us have our own issues that we deal with. We saw extreme issues in the video of poverty, lack of access to health care, having to be vigilant because of the danger of the, of the community, okay, and how stressful that is, being low in the pecking order at work and how stressful that can be, okay. Um, but we all have um, our things, you know, that, that bring us down, and that's okay. It's human, and, and organically... We're all set up different up here in how we deal with stress. So some people are very, very, very prone to clinical depression. It is no fault of their own. And we have to remember that, okay? And that it's a very difficult course for these people. And, um, and we need to be compassionate, we need to be helpful, and we need to encourage them to seek strategies to help themselves out, okay? All right. 
So we go in here, okay, and we look at the stress response. And again, this guy is such a wonderful lecture. I can't help but put him in here, okay? Um, uh, in terms of the readings, uh, we're easy on you again. This is just a single reading right here, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this, okay? Uh, this is a, um, you've heard of Wikipedia, there's Dia Diapedia, and this is all about diabetes. Because we're going to weave this um, biology, this mind-body connection, where we're going to talk about um, clinical depression and stress, and then how that then relates to increased risk for diabetes, okay? And a lot of you mentioned, hey, isn't there risk for, is, for dementia? And yes, the, absolutely. Um, the hippocampus is a learning and memory center for the direct effect of cortisol is to decrease our hippocampal related learning. So you see cognitive deficits. And importantly, um, the elevation of cortisol uh, leads to um, uh, insulin receptor insensitivity and type 2 diabetes. Okay, It leads to an elevation of blood glucose. Okay, that also contributes to di type 2 diabetes via the network with your metabolism through your fat cells and things like this, okay? So yes, 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 it's, it is a risk. Um, and, and an important fact that you should understand is when we look at people that have dementia, okay, 80%, um, 80 of those people that have dementia have diabetes, Okay, so that's a shocking, shocking statistic, and it can come right back to this. Okay, all righty. So, um, what I believe in is is reviewing things over and over and over again. So you've already heard about this, but now we're talking about uh, with respect to clinical depression. Okay, and we see that clinical depression is associated with dysfunction of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Okay, all right, and we see its manifestation. Okay, we see um, overactivation of this axis because you're stressed out causes uh, a measurable blunting of our daily or diurnal cortisol profiles. Okay, so we cycle cortisol based on our metabolic needs. Sometimes we need a lift, and that's what's all about. We get this big burst of cortisol first thing in the morning because. God, it's hard to get up in the morning, you know? This gets you the, the fuel you need to, to get things going, okay? Super important for that, all right? Cortisol, okay, is also, and you see this word right here, counter-regulatory, okay, um, with prolonged exposure, and it causes an induction of visceral and central adiposity or obesity, okay? Part of the dilemma of modern societies, okay, is what's called metabolic syndrome, and we see this abdominal obesity, okay, and this leads to, boom, insulin resistance, which is diabetes, type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, okay, every year I have to go and get my physical done, they draw my blood, and they tell me what my total cholesterol is, that's dyslipidemia if it's over 200, um, they tell me what my LDL is. That's dyslipidemia if it's over 150, okay? They tell me what my triglycerides are and my HDL is, okay? Um, and then a fallout of having insulin resistance and dyslipidemia is that we get hypertension, okay? High blood pressure that causes problems. These are all metabolic precursors to type 2 diabetes. So this is a super super important article okay so i just want you to kind of take your time um it goes through each one it talks about the activation of this guy with depression okay um it talks about how this alters your daily profile in depression okay again like i said we rely on the surges of cortisol and it gets blunted and it doesn't work right and as a result, you feel fatigued and you don't have the energy that you need, okay? Um, so it goes through each of these. I'm not going to read this for you, but you see where I'm headed on this. I want you guys to take what you can get out of this, okay? And then uh, right here, we see um, 
much of what we talked about. So um, up here is the hypothalamus, okay, the amygdala, okay, the anger, fear, rage center will tell the hypothalamus, it's fight or flight, guys, it's time to have this adrenaline rush. And so it secretes hormones that release an increase in adrenaline, and that's what a catecholamine is, okay? And it also, at the same time, uses this cascade of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis that ultimately releases in cortisol release into the bloodstream, okay? And so what happens is the cortisol feeds back, okay, to the pituitary. It feeds back to the hypothalamus, and we heard that it feeds back to the hippocampus. And it said, it's all constantly saying, hey, is the stress over? Because if it is, let's shut it off. That's what these negative signs mean. Let's shut it off. But if the amygdala is up here saying, no, I'm so freaked out right now, it overrides it and drives it and drives it and drives it. And you have chronic elevation here. Okay. Here is an example of the amygdala in overdrive. Okay. And it has to do with, well, they're going to learn about the prefrontal cortex. Okay. And our perception of the world. Okay. That causes depression and anxiety. And then that, through the ruminations, causes the amygdala to go into overdrive. Okay? So we have clinical depression. We have an elevation of this adrenaline rush. This is called our sympathetic nervous system. It causes this release of adrenaline. Okay? It also causes this elevation of cytokines from the immune system that puts you in a chronic inflammatory state. Really, really bad for your vasculature. Really, really bad for a risk for Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Really, really bad for autoimmune disease. So one of you mentioned autoimmune disease. Um, you know, uh, autoimmune is a chronic inflammatory disease. So stress, yes, it does um, uh, make autoimmune disease worse. Okay. It causes insulin resistance that leads to diabetes. Okay. On the other end, right here. Depression um, causes an elevation, a hyperactivity in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis that increases cortisol, and this results in insulin resistance and, again, contributes to diabetes. Okay? So that's what those figures are all about. I think it's a simple, awesome chapter. Okay? So I'm going to get out of here. Okay? And then what we do from there is we jump over to the discussion Okay, and we come down here and we talk about clinical depression. We talk about, from that short article, what's going on here. And any time, any time you can put in some personal thing from somebody you know, from your own life experiences, and how this relates, that's awesome. Now, you have to understand, you know, if you have depression for a couple of years, it doesn't mean you're going to become a diabetic. Okay, no, 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 no. Diabetes is a convergence of many pathways. However, if you have untreated clinical depression for a lifetime, it greatly increases your risk for getting diabetes. It greatly increases your risk for ultimately getting dementia later in life. Okay? All righty. Then uh, we come back over here. This is the, 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 the uh, second discussion this week, and it talks about this link between stress, depression, and dementia. Okay? So let's see. So we take this, um, this um, uh, prompt, okay, for, for this discussion, and it caught, I see one thing that I put right here, the amygdala hijack, where you're in a constant vigilant fear state, the amygdala, amygdala takes over, and it hyperactivates this system right here, okay? And so I want, you know, you're going to go through this, and you're going to start connecting the dots from stress, Depression, how that's a kind of circular downward spiral. They reinforce each other. Elevation of the HPA axis. And then um, the, the risk that haps, happens to the ultimate development of Alzheimer's disease. Okay? So we come back over here and we go back to the readings. Okay? And we can look at that second part. Okay? All right, so we're looking right here, and now we're looking at dem dementia. We're going to get into diabetes as well, okay? Then we're going to talk about vascular disease because, as you saw, it was all related, okay? 
And then, lo and behold, after that, we get into some really cool stuff. How your brain and stress influences immune, immune function. And then we're going to start talking about interventions. This is going to be all about your studies. You can use these topics for your upcoming, right here, okay, July 2nd mock journal paper, okay? Um, and you can also use it, um, all the information we gather here for your ultimate marketing plan, okay? All righty. Um, so we come back to this week's readings, okay? Um, and a couple of really cool videos that start connecting the dots between Alzheimer's and insulin resistance, okay? Uh, so we minute video, HBO special, that talks about the Alzheimer's project and it relates it back to stress and diabetes, okay? And, um, which is totally awesome, okay? And then we come back up here to this quick reading, okay? And boom. And just like I said, they now, they being people that work, neurologists, refer to Alzheimer's disease as type 3 diabetes, okay? Type 1 diabetes is a diabetes of youth, an autoimmune disease where the immune system destroys the adrenal gland cells that are responsible for, for releasing um, um, insulin, okay? Not adrenal, pancreas cell, cells, pancreatic cells, sorry. Um, type 2 diabetes is your insulin secreting cells are initially intact, okay? And you have insulin resistance from all the things we talked about, okay? So this really goes into amazing detail. I want you to take what you can from this, okay? And it talks about um, the growing evidence that supports that AD is a metabolic disease, okay? Mediated by impairments in insulin responsiveness, glucose utilization, and energy metabolism that leads to oxidative stress, inflammation, and a worsening of insulin resistance, okay? So we start with stress, okay, from the Sapolsky documentary. We think about how that leads to clinical depression, and then we think about how depression increases the activity of this stress axis, and then because of um, what it does from the neck down, the mind-body connection, and increasing our likelihood of having diabetes you have all these problems, okay? All right, so we see uh, fundamental abnormalities in, day, in, in Alzheimer's disease, that's what AD is, okay? This causes, uh, is reflected in terms of brain insulin resistance and deficiency. It's important for plasticity, okay? But it's also important for other aspects of the disease, okay? So it goes into detail, I know it's very scientific, okay? But guess what? You guys can handle this and you take what you can out of this, okay? Take what you can, all right? And you'll be amazed at how much you're gonna learn from this, all right? Okay, I'm out of here. I'm going to go back over here just to remind you, okay, because it is coming up. So I clicked on the um, two assignments that are that are upcoming and, and, and gonna be due. The first one is July 2nd right here, okay? And it talks about what you need to do in terms of this journal paper. And, and here we are, these are the learning objectives, this is the assignment description, and these are the directions. You follow these directions because these directions are the basis of the rubric that we use for grading this, okay? All righty, you're gonna have fun with this, awesome. All right, so um, uh, I look forward to this week's discussion. Um, it, 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 it's moving along in this Mind the body connection, okay? And um, and at the end, you guys are gonna be really, really great um, consumers of the biology and be able to apply it to all aspects of your life. All right, we'll see you next time.